So welcome back to the channel, John here. So today we took Big Red. Everybody knows Big Red, you love her. Ruby's about to get a little bit of a makeover in coming episodes. And I really haven't done a whole lot because I've been playing with Ruby. Uh, I've already put 4,800 miles on her within the first month. That is excessive. I've uh, been to Carolina Beach, been to Tennessee, um, been all around here paddling, going kayaking and what have you. So let me show you what I, we've done for our first mods. So as you know, Big Red's got a rack. So what we did is we also put a rack on Ruby. Now the first rack I got here, this is the Pro 500 rack from Thule, a Swedish brand company. This one was used off of Marketplace, so it is missing an end cap. Um, the other thing we did is my dad had these laying around in his garage. Thanks, Dad. So these are the gutter racks. They don't really make a lot of vehicles with rain gutters anymore. But as you see, they sit right in there. So these are the wide bars, and that enables me to actually carry two kayaks up here side by side. And as you can see, the same profile front to back. Um, some of you guys watch all these videos about overlanding and whatnot. So what do you need for overlanding? Well, for me, I've got a grill to start with. I picked up off Marketplace, a cooler, and that just means I can drive the Jeep anywhere I want and do a cookout. Um, still love this Jeep. Absolutely love the Gladiator. Now I know there's a trend. A lot of folks are getting rid of the Gladiator. This one is a six speed manual. 14 gears front and rear, four to one transfer case, which truly makes it a Rubicon. Now, what I don't like about it so far is I don't like the plastic bumper, but I didn't pay any extra for the Mopar bumper. Uh, so we'll probably end up upgrading to ARB eventually or some other stubby bumper. Uh, the tires and wheels, as you can see, I have not washed this thing since I bought it and I played in the mud quite a bit and taken it out on the trails. It's a Jeep. Uh, the inside is packed, so space is a premium. Um, so I'm not going to show you the guys the inside. Hi right, guys, so what we have here is a 371350 R17 Toyo Open Country MT. These are used and I've also got a set of JK AEV wheels. Now they've changed the back spacing on the AEV wheel. They've gone from a plus 10 to a plus 25 for the Gladiator. So we're going to try these out. I already did a test fit dry, but we're going to see how they look. Now. If you want to run a 37, you're going to have to lift your vehicle. Um, if you go three, four inches, I'm thinking probably four and a half inch kit, which would require a front drive shaft along with a whole bunch of other mods. Um, but the first thing we're going to do is just do a test fit, see if they even fit. Uh, I've seen other guys that run 37s on their Jeeps. Uh, those are 37, 1250s. These are actually 1350s. They're a whole inch wider. And I went with the wider back spacing to actually accommodate that other half inch of width that you're going to have on the back side of the rim from the center. So we're going to take Jack up the Jeep and test them out. So I'm sure a lot of you guys out there have the same question if you're looking to buy a new Gladiator Rubicon and that is will 37s fit on the Rubicon? A lot of people say they will stock so we're going to try it out and it all varies depending on the wheel and tire. We might have a little bit of rubbing on the front bumper with this one but we're going to see. Whenever you park a manual transmission make sure you apply the parking brake or the handbrake as well as putting in gear. We did pick up a new jack. This is a uh, Dayton three-ton jack from Harbor Freight. And I like it so far. Ended up having to do some emergency repairs in a uh, parking lot because I had a trailer break that went out on me. So I picked up this jack. And these are some six-ton uh, floor jacks. These are heavy duty. Now you can use smaller jacks, but really when you start dealing with trucks and lifted vehicles, you really want these simply for the height. Since we have an impact gun, uh, we're actually going to jack up the vehicle. Ideally, you want the tires still be in contact with the ground when you start loosening the lug nuts if you're doing this manually, but having an impact. Uh, these lug nuts are torqued to 130 foot-pounds. If you're curious about what the torque spec is on the Gladiator lug nuts, I had to Google it myself, but it's 130 foot-pounds. And so we're going to jack it up, put it on jack stands, and uh, go from there. That way we're getting safe. So when you jack up the axle, I like to lift right underneath the pumpkin. Um, you want to make sure that These teeth do not take and bend the cover plate on your differential. Now, if, even if you have a heavy duty differential cover, uh, you can still damage that if you get this wrong. And ideally you wanna have a pad on here. 
And the reason we're going up so high is because we are using a 37. So we're gonna have to get the axle pretty high, at least a good two or three inches off the ground. And then it's gonna settle some once we get it, the jack stands in place. So we'll probably have to jack up both sides. We're gonna try to support this where the sprung weight of the Jeep is. There's a spring directly below that. I put the jacks. We're gonna counter notches so we're even on both sides. And then we're gonna come down slowly all over the other side. That's why you wanna set the parking brake. Make sure you get the jack in gear and never get underneath a vehicle that's not supported by jack stands. And then we're just gonna come down slowly. This jack is not slow by any means. We're gonna use our half inch DeWalt impact. This thing's heavy duty. We don't wanna break anything. It's gonna be a 22 millimeter. And we're just gonna loosen this one up. It's always a good idea to have ear protection, safety glasses when you do this. Now these are aluminum wheels. So we're just gonna take and not going NASCAR speed here. We're just taking it loose. And hopefully we don't have to take it up a whole lot more. Height wise, if we were doing a suspension lift, yeah, we'd get this thing up as high as we could get it. And we're going to take off our tire. So there's our factory tire. Move that out of the way. So we got our new tire here. The best way to do this, and remember we're on jack stands. We're not only on a not just on jack. And these are the tuner lug nuts. So if you were looking at doing the old JK lugs, you need the acorn style tuner lug nuts. So you're just gonna use your legs. To get this up and on. All right, we're just gonna put these on by hand. And when you torque these, you're gonna wanna go in a star pattern. Now, the nice thing is, we're just going to bump them because we don't want to scratch up our new lug nuts. And there's a lot of factory anti seize on here. All right, so that one's on, and we'll torque these when we set it back on the ground. But as you can see, the suspension is compressed. And yes, a 37 can fit into the wheel well. So you guys can check out the profile on that. So you guys can see the profile. It barely sticks out outside the fender flare. Where I'm concerned is right back here when we turn the wheel. So before we get too far into this project, we're gonna see how badly it scrapes And amazingly enough, it fits, but it wouldn't take much. Maybe two inches of up travel, we'd have issues. Let's look towards the bumper. The bumper, amazingly enough, it clears the bumper. All right, well, we might try it out. All right, so we're gonna do the full swap and we'll torque these down. Let's go swap the other side real quick. Now doing that, I did notice this Jeep does not have a steering wheel lock, which could be an issue. Make sure we're going the right way. We're coming out. Once again, DeWalt XR. This thing has 1200 foot pounds of torque. It's amazing. We've got this on level two so we don't break anything. Because it will snap a lug off. There's five lug nuts right there. And we've got about 5,000 miles, so regardless, uh, we'll need to rotate the tires anyway. Use our legs to lift it into place. There we go. Stock Rubicon 37-13-50s. We got us a little closer. This vehicle being brand new, Barely any miles, has a 
a lot of good anti-seize still on it. Still not sure what happened there. Maybe some goof off will clean that up. But I do like the red. I, I don't know if this is a limited edition AUV custom wheel that they had, or the red was only on their factory Jeeps that they built, but I really like it. And we're not gonna go do any hardcore wheeling with this, but we're gonna see how the street banners are. Rubbing on the jack stand. So we torqued both wheels to 130 foot pounds. We're gonna come out back, do the same thing. Before we do this, we're gonna chalk the front tires. Chalk the front tires so it does not roll back on us. Now we can go up with it. We're gonna to wanna to go up at least two or three inches so we can get our new tires in there. All right, next thing, jack stands. Now making sure we're not anywhere we're gonna get crushed, we're gonna stick these carefully under the axles. Using our DeWalt impact. Here we go. Start back at the top. Nope, that one's good. 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 Right. Scuba. All right, we are tor- All right, guys, that was freaking awesome. Look at this thing. We're gonna let off the jack stands real quick. And we'll go from there. All right, guys, I'm gonna go around and we're gonna retorque everything one time. And then we will take it for a test drive, see how much rubbing we have. Taking that view, that's a good looking Jeep right there. That's what the new wheels look like. Chalk block back there, still stock bumper. We're gonna have to do something about that. Got the rocker rails, got the back here. Let's look underneath, make sure there's no exhaust or brackets hitting, which the AV wheels push that out. If you tried using stock wheels, they would be rubbing the shock body and everything back there. Awesome, so we're gonna get cleaned up a little bit and we're gonna go for a test drive. All right guys, so we're cruising fourth gear, fifth gear. It says 50 on the speedometer, but I know we're doing every bit of probably 55. 37s if you start bouncing around you will break an axle so that's the only downfall of the 37s i've got so much more traction now it's gonna be a tight fit it looks like i'm telling you guys even though we only put on the tires and just like the dodge it just sits so much higher so we're gonna go check out dirt road now So 
we're gonna do a little walk around. So these tires look awesome on this Jeep. Got my gear in the back there. I mean, they just look like they were made for this Jeep. I mean, it truly, truly looks like a Jeep now. Right, so I do have the tire pressure sensor light on. And this is my setup. So I got tire pressure sensor light on. We got the display for my phone. Connected to my phone, which is hands-free. And then we just get to see out the truck. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed today's show. If you would, smash that like button, smash that subscribe button, and keep coming back for more. Once again, you guys get to come along for the ride, watch me build my dreams, but the true purpose of this channel is to motivate, inspire, and inform you so you can get it out there and start building your dreams.